right triangle trig. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find out what the hypotenuse is. So I'm just going to do the square root of 15 squared plus 8 squared. That's basically the Pythagorean theorem. So the square root of 15 squared plus 8 squared, 17. So now I can solve every trig ratio. So sine of theta equals cosine theta equals tangent theta equals cosecant. And I know it's a bother. Goes with sine. Theta equals a fraction. Secant. Theta equals a fraction. And then cotangent theta equals a fraction. Um, so katoa. You're going to want to write this down as soon as you get into the testing center. So ka to a. Some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on apples. So here we go. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite theta is 8. The hypotenuse is 17. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is 15. And the hypotenuse is 17. Tangent theta is opposite over adjacent. Um, opposite is 8 over 15. And then the reciprocal functions are just that. You just flip them. 17 over 8. 17 over 15. 15 over 8. Not that, not, not that troublesome. 22, another we'll so Katoa problem. This time they're a little bit more abstract about the, the triangle. However, they give me the lettering for the triangle. And they say A equals 3 and C equals 5. So I'm going to make the triangle a little bit bigger. And they say that A, this side here, is 3. And that the hypotenuse is 5. So to find this side, I'm going to do the square root of 5 squared minus 3 squared. Um, the reason we subtract them is because we're looking for a smaller side. I know where it's going to be. This is a famous right triangle, but I'm going to type it in. 5 squared minus 3 squared. It should give me 4. And it's called a carpenter's triangle, a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So this side is 4. And then it wants me to find all six trig functions for angle B. And this is angle B up here. So now I have to label this. This side here, 5, is the hypotenuse. No matter what. But because this is angle B, 4 is going to be my opposite. And 3 is going to be my adjacent. And now I'm going to do all six trig functions. Sine of angle B. Cosine of angle B. Tangent of angle B. Cosecant of angle B. Secant of angle B. Cotangent of angle B. And let's see what that renders. So for sine of B, I have opposite over hypotenuse. So what's opposite this angle B is 4. And my hypotenuse is 5. Adjacent is 3. My hypotenuse is 5. Opposite is 4, my adjacent is 3. 4 over 3. And the other 3 go pretty quickly. 5 over 4, 5 over 3, 3 over 4. Find a co-function with the same value as the given expression. Um, so tangent of pi over 4 is cotangent. Has to equal the same thing. So cotangent of what? Equals tangent of pi over 4. This is actually kind of hard to do in radians. This is actually kind of hard to do in radians. It'd be easier to do in degrees because they have to add up to 90 degrees. In this case, they have to add up to pi over 2. So I'm looking for cotangent of something. Um, whatever I put in here plus whatever I put in here adds up to equal pi over 2. Um, instead of doing degrees, I know they got to add up to equal pi over 2. So I'm just going to do pi over 2 minus pi over 4. Let's see. Pi over 2, shift, pi over 2, minus pi over 4. And notice, it equals pi over 4. The cotangent of pi over 4 is equal to tangent of pi over 4. Another way to look at it is like this. If I have cosine of 30, that's going to equal sine, its co-function, of 60. Because 60 plus 30 adds up to equal 90. Let's remember that pi over 2 equals 90 degrees. They have to add up to equal 90 degrees. Um, another one would be tangent of 50. Now, 90 minus 50 is going to equal cotangent of 40. they got to add up to equal 90. They have to add up to equal 90. In this case, they have to add up to equal pi over 2. Pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is 2 pi over 4, which simplifies to pi over 2. Um, it wants me to use the special right triangles, but I think I can do this one entirely in the calculator. Because I'm afraid it's going to give me a decimal. The first thing I did was type in sine of pi over 4 times cosine of pi over 3. And that's the first part of it. And notice it gives me root 2 over 4. So I'm going to write that down. Root 2 over 4. And then I'm going to minus whatever tangent of pi over 4 is. So I'm going to type in tangent of pi over 4. I don't want to get that decimal. I want to get an exact number. 1. So root 2 over 4 minus 1. You would be allowed to type that in as your answer. You would be allowed to type that in as your answer. It doesn't have to be in that format. It can be in that format. Um, let me see what would happen if I just type this in. Minus. Tangent of pi over 4. If I type it in exactly like it looks. Oh, it gives me a good answer. Notice. Their answer is root 2 minus 4 over 4. This answer is negative 4. All they did was switch that up. So you could have typed this entire equation right into the calculator without even doing it the way that they wanted you to. I love the calculator TN problems. I'm sorry I did them out of order. I did um, 22, 24, and then 23. So I'm on number 25 now. I apologize for my inattentiveness. <clears throat> now they want me to find an angle. I'm sorry, they want me to find letter C. They want me to find letter C. So I'm going to implement so ka toa. So ka. And I'm not going to need toa because I don't have the adjacent side. I have the opposite side of the angle. And I have the hypotenuse. So I have opposite over hypotenuse. I'm going to solve this for C. So sine of the angle. Sine of that angle, 31 degrees, equals opposite, 14 over C. And here's the move. If you have the variable on the bottom, just slide that 14 over on top of the sine 31. So I have 14 over sine 31. And that's going to be my calculator can. 
First things first, I need to get in degree mode. Notice there's a degree, I have to change it to degree mode. It's a little tricky, you can't fall for that one. So I'm gonna hit shift, mode, three, to get me into degree. And it's hard for me to see, but there's a little D up there now. Let me clear this out. And now I'm just gonna type this in 14 over sine 31. A nice calculator key in problem. 14 over sine 31. I have to close the parenthesis. If I don't close the parenthesis, it'll give me a go-to error. So I'm gonna go back and close that parenthesis on the 31. And there it is, 27.18. And they just want me to round it to the nearest whole number, so it's just 27. <clears throat> so they want me to calculate theta in radians. So it says cosine theta equals 0.6853. This is a nice problem. In order to get that cosine over to the other side to solve for theta, theta is going to equal shift cosine, or arc cosine, of 0.6853. Now, again, they want it in radian mode, so they're trying to trick me. So I'm going to take that, and I'm going to switch it into radian mode. So that's going to be shift mode 4 to be in radian mode. Clear it out, and I'm just going to type arc cosine. To find the arc cosine, notice the cosine button has a shift cosine. So when I hit shift cosine, it gives me that little negative 1. Now I type in the 0.6853, 0.6853. And it gives me the answer that they want, 0.8157. But they want me to write around it to three decimal places. So if this is five or above, I have to give that five a shove. And that gives me the six. Application problem. Reading the love story, it's hard for me to read. But the height of this triangle, I'm going to redraw it. The height of the triangle is 650 feet. And the angle that they give me down here, the angle that they give me down there is 13 degrees. So that means I have to go back into degree mode. And what they're looking for is this side length here, this side length C. So I have to go back to degree mode. So I'm going to hit shift, mode, three. Now I'm in degree mode, I'm gonna clear it out. And this is gonna be opposite over hypotenuse. So it's gonna be sine of 13 degrees equals opposite 650 over the hypotenuse of C. And remember, all I have to do is the variables on the bottom, slide that over to the top. So that's gonna be 650 over sine 13. 650 over sine of 13, sine of 13 degrees. Don't forget when we're down here, we have to close the parentheses. And that's gonna give me 288951, but they want me to round to the nearest foot. So because that's five or above, I have to give that nine a shove. And when I get that nine shell, that's going to give me 2890. 2890 is their answer. I apologize again. I'm way out of order. Number 27. I did, I did 26 and then 28. Now I want to do 27. So I have to be jockeying around a little bit. Um, this time they want me to find out what cosecant 20 times secant 70 minus tangent 70 cotangent 20 equals. And it says do not use a calculator. I'm sorry, but I'm going to use a calculator on this one. Notice I'm in the green mode, so I have to change it into the green mode. So that's going to be shift mode 3. Shift mode 3. Now I know I'm in the green mode. I'm going to clear this thing out. And now, I gotta know some stuff. Um, there is no cosecant button on my calculator. There is no secant button on my calculator. There is a tangent, but there is no cotangent button on my calculator. So here's what I need to do. Remember, cosecant lines up with sine. So cosecant is actually 1 over sine of 20 degrees. Secant lines up with cosine. So that's gonna be 1 over cosine of 70 degrees. Minus tangent of 70 degrees times 1 over tangent of 20 degrees. Now, if I type that in, I don't get an error. It should kick out that one pretty nicely. So it's a pretty complicated calculator key, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. So I'm going to hit the fraction bar, 1 over sine 20. Close the parentheses, be careful, don't be lazy. Then I'm going to multiply times 1 over cosine 70. 1 over cosine 70. And it's nice that these aren't 90 degrees and stuff like that, because that's where you run into um, 1 divided by 0, but none of these are going to be divided by 0. Then I'm going to minus tangent 70, minus tan of 70 degrees, close the parentheses, times 1 over tangent, because cotangent is 1 over tangent, 1 over tangent 20, close the parentheses, it equals and hope it gives me the nice answer. One. <clears throat> I already did number 28, I think. I already did number 28. For 29, they want to find all six trig functions. I like those um, if the coordinate is 1, 1. So I'm going to go real quick and graph 1, 1. I go right 1, up 1. So that's 1, 1. And it gives me a triangle. So this side length is 1. This side length is 1. I know it's in quadrant 1, which is really nice. Um, this is going to be my angle theta. I'm going to find the, the hypotenuse. So that's going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared. I know what it's going to be. It's going to be root 2. That's my hypotenuse, root 2. So I'm going to find all six trig functions. Sine theta equals something. Cosine theta equals something. Tangent theta equals something. And then I have cosecant. Remember, cosecant theta goes with sine theta. Um, secant theta goes with cosine theta. And then cotangent theta, of course, goes with um, tangent theta. So sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over root 2. Cosine is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 over root 2. Tangent is 1 over 1. Cosecant is root 2 over 1. Secant is root 2 over 1. Cotangent is 1 over 1. Now, they don't like us to have a radical on the bottom, and they want us to simplify it, so I can do that really quickly. 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2 is going to simplify nicely to root 2 over 2. So I can rewrite this as root 2 over 2. This is going to be root 2 over 2. This is just going to simplify to root 2. This is just going to simplify to root 2. And of course, this is just going to simplify to 1. And that's the format they want the answers in. Um, with the radical rationalized. Number 30, evaluate secant of pi 
secant pi. Um, secant lines up with cosine, so that would be 1 over cosine of pi. And we'll, we'll see if the calculator will kick that out. So 1 over cosine pi. Close the parentheses, remember. Um, and it says 1, so that's not accurate. I'm probably in the wrong mode. So let's make sure we're in radian mode. So shift mode 4. And we're going to hit equals, and then notice it's negative 1. That's the correct answer. Once again, we have to remember to be in the correct mode. The answer should be kind of crisp. Number 31, um, it says sine is negative and cotangent is positive. Find out which, which um, quadrant theta lies. So I'm going to draw the unit circle. And the saying goes like this. All students take calculus um, or cast. This is quadrant 1. This is quadrant 2. This is quadrant 3. This is quadrant 4. And this means all are positive, but it says sine is negative. Here, sine is positive. Here, tangent is negative and cosine is positive. That tells us which ones are positive. So, um, sine is positive here. It can't be in quadrant 2. It can't be in quadrant 1. It says cotangent is positive. If tangent is positive, cotangent is positive. So, cotangent is positive here and here. But we've already ascertained that it can't be in quadrant 1, all right, because it says sine is negative. Um, notice over here, the coordinates are negative, negative. So, cosine is negative and sine is negative in this quadrant. So, sine is negative and tangent is uh, positive. So, it has to be quadrant 3. Number 32. Um, cosine is 12 over 13, and it tells us where it's located between 270 and 360. Oh, 270 and 360. So this is 270 degrees, and this is 360 degrees. So my triangle's in here somewhere. And it says cosine is 12 over 13. So I need to find out what sine theta equals. They tell me what cosine theta equals. They say cosine theta equals 12 over 13. So that means right there that the hypotenuse is 13, and the adjacent side is 12. I need to figure out what this side is. So in order to figure out what this side is here, the, the uh, opposite side, um, all I have to do is the diagram there. Square root. Now, to find a side, when they're giving you the hypotenuse, you subtract. So it's going to be 13 squared minus 12 squared. Calculator T, it doesn't matter what mode. So square root, 13 squared, minus 12 squared. And there it is, it's going to give me 5 as my opposite side. So now I can answer all six of them. So tangent's going to equal, tangent theta's going to equal a fraction. And then remember, cosecant goes with sine, cosecant theta. And then secant theta goes with cosine. And then cotangent theta goes with tangent. So opposite is 5 over hypotenuse is 13, 5 over 13. And then tangent's going to be opposite over um, adjacent, so that's going to be 5 over 12. But notice, I had to go down. I had to go down. So that y value is going to be negative. That's going to be a negative 5 there and a negative 5 there. We have to be careful with our positives and negatives. Remember, in this quadrant, it goes positive, negative. And so the, the phi value is negative. Now I'm going to do the cosecant is 13 over negative 5, and then 13 over 12, and then 12 over negative 5. Um, 33, they want me to find the reference angle for 300 degrees. So the reference angle for 300 degrees, let's find that on the unit circle. Um, this is 90, 180, 270, plus 30. That would give me 300. So that would give me 30 degrees from, from 270. So that would give me 30 degrees from 90. And 90 minus 30 is 60 degrees. So 60 degrees is my um, reference angle. Again, they, they give me 300. So I go around 90, 180, 270, plus 30. That's 30 degrees from 270 to 300. And then from 90, the reference angle is always going to be in this first quadrant. That's where the reference angles are. So they're either 30 degrees, they're either 45 degrees, or they're either 60 degrees. Um, the radians would be pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. But they want it in degrees. So my reference angle is going to be 60 degrees. And then they want me to find out what tangent of 300 is. I love doing these. All I have to do is make sure I'm in the right mode. Shift, mode, 3 to be in degree. And then I'm going to type in tangent 300. Close parentheses, and that's negative root 3. 